Hi, we're going to do a real quick example here for calculating a linear regression. This was the lesson today on Tuesday, uh, and this hopefully will help any troubles you might have if you're doing these calculator steps at home. And that's what we're focusing on, is how to do a linear regression with a TI-84 or 83 series calculator. The example we're going to look at uh, is what's up on the screen. This table contains the barometric pressure and wind speeds for various hurricanes and tropical storms. We're going to use a graphing calculator to find the equation of the regression line and the correlation coefficient to determine the goodness of the fit of the line. Then we'll use the equation to predict the wind speed of a hurricane whose barometric pressure is 950 millibars. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we take out the graphing calculators. We're going to enter in this data set. So in order to do that, we go to our statistics menu, which is the stat button, and I'm going to edit the information I have in here for statistics. So I'll choose option number one. List one will be a list of all my X values, the input values for my domain, in this case, the barometric pressure and list two will be all my Y values, the range values, in this case the wind speed. Now to enter in list one, uh, I just go ahead and enter them in successively. If you have some other garbage in here, say from a previous list, I'll put a couple in here, and you need to get rid of those, move all the way up using the cursor feature, all the way up till list one is highlighted. From here, press clear. Do not, I repeat, do not press delete. That will get rid of the list completely. We want to press clear. And then once we move back down, that list will be cleared out. Okay. Now I can go ahead and place all these values in. So I'll do that. 954, 1003, 955, 986, 990, 938, 999, 975, 970, 970, 987, 905, 979. Okay, so now I've got all my X values in. I'm going to move over and put in my Y's. So I'll cursor over to list two and put in my corresponding Y's. Now, if you're following along with me as I go, uh, you might want to pause until you have all of the values entered. Maybe you have them done already. But the big thing I always like to do is check at the end to see if I have the same number of values in list one as in list two. That'll help me see if I've missed any or maybe repeated a value that I didn't intend to. All right, good. So I've got all those in. Next thing I want to do is plot these points as x, y ordered pairs. So to do that, I go to my stat plot feature. Okay, so I go second, y equals, takes me to the stat plot, and I'm going to choose plot number one, which is currently off. So I'll press enter, and it's off. I want it to be on, which is blinking right now, so I'll press enter again. Now that's on. Currently, it has by default the scatter plot option chosen. If that wasn't there, I would want a cursor over to it and press enter. And also is saying my X's are coming from list one, which is good, and Y's are coming from list two. If you don't have that as the case, you're going to want to move down to list one and press second list one, which is your one, or second list two here uh, when you have the Y's highlighted. All right, but I'm good to go. This is, this is ready. So if I went to my graph right now, I wouldn't see anything. And that's because my window is not set up for the data set that was given to me. So I need to go set up my window. Now my X values, as I look through the barometric pressure, go from the 900s, 905, all the way up to just past 1,000. So I'm going to set up my X's to go from 900 to just past 1,000, let's say 1,010. 
And a decent value to count by there, what I'm counting by the x scale, would be 10. Now I'm going to move down and set up my y's. Now my y values, the outputs are the wind speed in knots, uh, which goes from, let's see, 40 all the way up to 155. So let's have those go from 40 up to, let's say, 160. 160. And we can count by tens again, that would be fine. Now once my window is set up, I can go ahead and hit the graph button and I can see all my data points. Excellent. However, I still don't have my regression equation. In order to do that, I have to go back to my statistics menu, stat, and I'm going to choose calculate, move over to that, linear regression, which is option four. So I'll press four. I have to press enter again. It actually hasn't done the execution of the command yet. Now I have it. So here I've got my slope, that's my A value, and my y-intercept, that's the B value. And I could write these down by hand, but fortunately for us, our calculator, every time we do a calculation, stores the information in a variable spot in its memory. So that's actually already stored for us. We'll call it up later. However, one of the things I forgot to do was tell it that I want to have the correlation coefficient uh, calculated as well. So let's do that. I'm going to go to the second catalog, which is zero button, and I need to turn on my diagnostic feature. So I'm going to skip down to the D's and move down to diagnostic on. So we're moving down here. There, diagnostic on. Press enter and enter again. Now that's on. Let me go back and recalculate uh, this regression equation. So I'll go stat, calculate, linear regression, which is 4, enter. Now I'm getting this r squared and this r value. So if you need to find the correlation coefficient, this is where we want. There's two different ones. The r squared, we're going to leave that for the statisticians out there, those people that are really into statistics. The r value has a little bit more real life to us. And this is basically telling us um, how well our line fits the data. The absolute value of this r number, the better fit the the equation is to the data, the closer the absolute value will be to 1. So the absolute value of negative uh, 0.967, that's really close to 1. So my regression equation does a pretty nice job of fitting the data. And this is describing the typical distance a data point is from our line. Uh, and the closer the absolute value is to 1, the better off we are. So excellent. We're, we're good to go. Now, again, I could write this down, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to press my Y equals button. Okay, And there's a couple different ways people like to do this. This is the one that I'm comfortable with. I'm going to go call up that variable where the equation was stored to. If I go into my variables, I think that's what this stands for, the VARS menu. So I'm currently in the VARS menu. And what I'm looking for is that statistical information, which is choice five, so I'll go there. The equations, so I'll move over to the equations, and I want my regression equation, which is the first one, so I'll press enter. And it automatically types it in there for me. Now I have the most recent operating system, so it actually doesn't bump it down to the next line, but it, it's all there. It might actually write it all out, and you'll see it here if you have the older operating system. But it's there, if I go to my graph, We'll see that line drawn through it. Excellent. So if you're asked for the regression equation, that equation that we just put in, uh, this whole big thing here, and I can move over to the side and we'll see uh, all that equation. That's what's being asked for. Now you won't want to write down all the decimal places, but maybe three decimal places worth would be good. Okay, so that's in there. The last thing we're being asked for is to approximate what we would have with 950 millibars of pressure. So to calculate like that, let me go back to my graph, we don't have a point on the graph for that value. So what I'm going to do is I'll go second calculate and I want to calculate a value, that's choice one, so press enter, and that's what my x values is, my x value is 950, so I'm going to put that in there, 950, and I'll press enter, and it tells me 
that the wind speed would be 107.6 knots. So re real quickly to review what we've done, we've taken and inputted a data set into our calculator, plotted that data set, calculated the regression equation, used the correlation uh, coefficient to determine how well that equation fits the data, then used the, we plotted that equation and used the equation to make a prediction as to what a non-included data point would be for a given domain element to find the corresponding range element. I hope that helps. You can go back and watch this if you need to repeatedly, pause it, uh, whatever you'd like to do, but I hope that that helps a little bit. Uh, for my class, the assignment then was to do uh, on page 42, number 6, parts C and D. Okay? Thank you very much. Good luck.